Hello folks, welcome to the channel, channel Jose. Today we're going to talk about the idle air control valve of a Toyota Tercel. And uh, we got a 91 to 94 Toyota Tercel model here, which is a mechanical and a vacuum uh, idle control valve. And then we have the 95 to 99 Toyota Tercel, and it's also on the Paseo. So this is the, uh, the older model and the newer model. So today we got the uh, throttle body of a 91 to 94 Toyota Tercel, and we're gonna show you where this valve will be located on this older model. And um, we don't have the 95 to 99 Toyota Tercel, but we're gonna show you a little bit about it. But today in a specific, we're gonna talk about the 95 to 99 Toyota Tercel. In some case, you have a poor idle or too high of an idle and never drops or it's too low. So we're gonna show you simple maintenance that you can do to this idle air control valve so you can bring your car back to normal operations. So we're gonna show you how easy it is to do this maintenance and show you a little bit on how it works so you understand. So with that said, let's go into it. So here we have the 91 to 94 Toyota Tercel throttle body. And this is this, if you're looking at the throttle body from the front, this is where the idle air control valve is located in the bottom. So it's bolted on by four fill up screws. They're a little bit long. And then there's uh, four hoses going into it. And there's uh, three hose, three fittings on the actual valve and one in the throttle body, which this one over here has three and it has this groove, which the throttle body uh, fitting is right here. So it falls and slides right over it. Two for, two for coolant and two for a uh, vacuum. So this, um, valve is actually a mechanical 100 percent mechanical with just temperature the 95 to 99 toyota tercel or paseo is a half mechanical and half uh electronic so there's two fittings this is the coolant where it goes into the throttle body heats up the valve and and also this uh there's a motor or this a solenoid valve here that operates the the air going into the engine so when the far butterfly is closed completely, we're not uh, stepping on the gas. All the air that is going to the engine is going through this port. So that way this controls how much idle we need to give it. When you turn on the car, this is where the air goes through. So this is located in the bottom as well. But this, uh, the 95 to 99 Toyota to sell, the throttle body be facing the driver's side. So it'll be bolted on the bottom as well, but if the pattern changes, so they don't even, they're not even compatible even on the bolt-on. So there's half electronic, half mechanical on this, and this is 100% mechanical. So if this is not functioning right, you might have poor RPMs or high RPMs because the air going into it is too much or too little and is not being controlled right. So you can do a simple maintenance to this valve. You can get it back to work uh, normally and uh, get your RPMs back to normal. So we're gonna show you how you can do this small PM so you can uh, get this guy back on because these are very expensive components. So if you don't know about it, you might spend about a couple hundred dollars just on a valve when you could have done a small uh, maintenance to it and then it's gonna get you uh, to save money. So now to do the basic maintenance on this idle air control valve, we're gonna have to remove this Phillips screw and this other Phillips screw to separate the solenoid valve away from this body this is plastic, this is aluminum, and this controls how this little gate in there opens and closes. So it actually rotates, and we're gonna show you. Air might come in through here and, and take another path. So we're gonna show you that how what we mean by, by that. So this will be full of coolant on this side. That's why it requires a gasket, so it doesn't mix with the air. So now you don't have to remove this side because it's the calibration. So we're gonna remove it just to show you what we mean on this side. But the basic main is take these two screws out so we can split it. So we wanna say that when you're pulling this valve apart, and you have this piece right here, and you have pulled those two screws off. Now what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna pull hard because there's a magnet. It's, this is kind of like a magnet, and it's gonna be attracting this component towards, towards it. So you wanna, um, as you can see, it's magnetized. 
So you're gonna have to pull it hard once you remove those screws. So once you remove it and then you pull them out, you clean this, clean this area inside there really good. So we get all the rid of all that grease and then we clean this area too, just with a rag. And then uh, so that way we start with a clean uh, surfaces. So now once you clean this uh, area, you put it aside and next thing you got to clean, give some maintenance to this. So we're going to show you what you got to do and what you got to check before you start doing some maintenance. So you got to check on this valve the next thing. So usually what this valve does is that this rotates and then uh, sometimes these are stuck. So the solenoid valve doesn't make that thing turn. So this one is already um, loose because we've been working on with it. So what you got to do is you got to clean this area and you got to spray carburetor cleaner here and here. So then everything starts breaking up and cleaning in the inside of the chamber. And then there's a little gate. As you can see that as we turn this, it closes this area. So that will stop the air from flowing. So that will be at high idle, low idle. And it controls it like this, like a solenoid, like a water on your sink. You will close it down slowly or open it to fully open. This is how the it's like flow on water. You want to decrease it or increase the flow. So that's how this throttle uh, idle air control valve works with the solenoid. So now you clean this area, this, and then once you get that out and clean, we're going to do the next maintenance. So this valve wouldn't, uh, if this is stuck because so much gunk in there, this wouldn't rotate because of the solenoid doesn't have that much power to rotate a smooth surface. There's no gears or anything that that turns into this. So it's just magnetism that tries to turn this, but this is full of gunk. This is not gonna turn and it's gonna always be at high, high idle or low idle. So it depends on where it got stuck. So now we're gonna start cleaning it. So then sometimes these uh, valves are stuck open and the car is always high RPMs everywhere, no matter what, because this, this is, full of gunk and it's stuck open or it might be stuck close and your car is shutting down so often because there's there's so poor air going into the engine that it completely turns itself off so this valve is supposed to work like that opening closing as it warms up cold cold start and as it warms up starts closing the little gate and then goes now to con control the normal RPMs, cold, hot. So, so now we're going to spray carburetor cleaner in there so we can start cleaning it. So now that you have cleaned the valve with the carburetor cleaner and all that stuff in there is clean, but this still stuck, now you gotta do this. You grab the OBD-40 and you spray some inside the chamber and we're gonna spray some in there area too where the shaft is. So now that we cleaned it with a carburetor cleaner, now we added some uh, OBD-40. Now what you do is you work it back and forth and if it's stuck, it should move like this. So you just work it back and forth like this. And once it breaks loose and it's spinning softly, now we'll just wipe it with a rag, clean the internal, spray some more WD-40 so you can wash off whatever broke off. And then just wipe it down and put it back into the car. So that way that WD-40 that is in there lubricates the stuff because this, this over here has to be clean, but this area is going to get some more gunk. So it doesn't matter if you leave just some uh, coating of WD-40. So now you can start putting it back together over here and that will be the maintenance on this valve. So if your valve didn't move like this, loosely, and it's stuck, make, it, make sure that it works like this before you start putting it into the car and that was your problem and your core idle. And this piece is a magnet, look. We told you we're gonna expose this area. You don't need to access this area. Don't take this off. This is for the calibration of the idle air control valve. So don't mess with these screws. Just take this other side off 
but don't mess with this we're gonna take it off just to show you how it is in there so this all it is is a spring for tension on this side so you don't this is for calibration for calibrating the 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 gate on the inlet of the air or outlet so you don't need to take this off that's for this is for actual fine precise adjustments so if we turn the shaft on this side as you can see we turn that little uh, plate because what it does this spring that falls into that groove and as we spin the the other side it spins that so this spring holds and turns it holds the the gate from closing too much or opening too much by calibrating so you don't need to mess with this side so we'll put it back and then we'll start putting in this other side together now that we have done the maintenance to the valve and we got the shaft and everything working properly we get our solenoid side and we put it on round parts have to match and then we put the two screws tightening them and we got our working idle air control valve Well, folks, we wanted to expose this simple, easy maintenance that you can do to your uh, idle air control valve on your 95 to 99 Toyota Tercel or 95 to 99 Toyota Paseo. And uh, uh, this valve, all you have to do is just split the solenoid from the mechanical side and then just clean the carbon on the uh, chambers. Once you clean that out, throw some WD-40, make it sure that it loosens itself. And once you get that uh, soft movement back and forth, you can throw it together, tighten it, put a new gasket, put it on the throttle body, and tighten it, and that should get rid of the poor idle or high idle on your uh, engine. So with that said, uh, hopefully that helps, and that's a good maintenance to do, so you don't have to replace or buy new uh, idle air control valve, because you could have done this and save a lot of money. All you need is just maybe buy carburetor cleaner, throw it in there, clean it, and throw that idle air control valve back in your car, and it will get rid of the problem. With that said, folks, for our friends who are watching our video, haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. If you like our video, give us a thumbs up, share it, and we'll see you soon with more videos here in the canal, El Chano Jose.